Specifically, we're going to be talking about Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis, or MAP, and this is what causes Yonage disease in ruminant animals. It's a bacteria, and it can be passed in their milk if they're infected with it, and it's also sometimes found in patients with Crohn's disease. Um, this is a hot topic because the fact that Yonis and Crohn's disease seem similar to consumers makes them think that the fact that any MAP in the milk that can be passed from Yonis disease cows could show up in commercial milk, and they're concerned that it may cause Crohn's disease in humans. So just a little background on Yoni's disease. It's a chronic wasting disease in ruminant animals, and it's not just in dairy cows. It's caused by the MAP bacteria, and the MAP bacteria will invade the gastrointestinal tract and reside in the macrophages where it can stay there dormant for two to five years before showing symptoms of Yoni's disease. And the symptoms would be low milk production, diarrhea, and wasting away of, because of inefficient absorption of nutrients. And if the cow is left in the herd, it will be fatal eventually. And it's been estimated that it impacts the dairy industry of $250 million per year of the cows that have Yonis disease because of the lower milk they produce and the cost of replacing them. Um, Crohn's is a comparable disease in humans. It's an inflammatory bowel disease that um, obviously causes inflamed intestines, which inhibits the um, absorption and the nutrients that people can get from their food. And um, the cause of it is unknown. They think that it could be genetic because it can run in families, or um, it can be autoimmune because the inflammation causes the, or the inflammation is from the white blood cells that are attacking food, acting like they're foreign objects. And um, Crohn's is treatable. It's a, a segmented disease, so like it can be treated with surgery where they take out the part of the intestine that is problematic or um, it can also be treated with drugs and nutritional diet changes. Um, the, both of the these diseases are similar because they both affect the GI tract. Um, they have similar symptoms including inflammation, um, diarrhea, and an efficient absorption of nutrients. And both of them have long incubation periods, meaning that the disease can be in their system for a long time before any clinical signs are shown. And this is just a picture of comparing the two. On the left, we have a, a Crohn's disease patient, and on the right is a, a Yoni's patient. And as you can see, the swelling of the mucosal lining in the intestinal tract is indicative of the two diseases. So can you get a Crohn's infection from drinking milk? What I'm going to be discussing is the effects pasteurization has on the MAP bacteria, the prevalence of MAP in milk, and the viability of the MAP in the retail commercial pasteurized milk, and the effect that milk has had on patients with Crohn's disease. And this is a table that shows the effect of pasteurization. And they took the milk from healthy cows and inoculated it with 10 to the 4 CFU per mil. CFU is a cultural forming unit. And that, the 10 to the 4 is about the high end that would be from one cow, because a normal symptomatic Yoni's disease cow will produce uh, less than one CFU per mil, but you can also have fecal, fecal contamination that is 10 to the 8th CFU per mil. So that uh, equals out to about 10 to the 4th, which is comparable to the high end. And it shows that there's 1% or less that remains in the milk after pasteurization. And the prevalence of it in retail milk, this was a study done on three farms and compared with retail milk. Uh, these farms pasteurized their own milk and it showed that it had 2% of the uh, MAP bacteria in it after pasteurization and the retail market milk had 1.6% MAP in it. And so it, it does show some heat tolerance to pasteurization and it is found in the milk. So how is uh, the MAP bacteria detected. It can be detected using PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. It uh, finds the DNA of the MAP, and, or it can be grown in a culture. And this study compares the PCR 
to culture. And for some reason, I found that it was more prevalent in the pasteurized milk than the raw, but they never addressed this reason. But So what I really want you to get out of this slide is that PCR will pick up the dead and alive DNA from the MAP bacteria when the culture is what is the alive amount of DNA. So it's 11.8 of the PCR found it in the pasteurized milk compared to the 1.8 of the actual live bacteria in the pasteurized milk. And this is just the <coughs> PCR of a comparison in Crohn's disease patients. And this is the DNA marker for MAP. And it's found in about 50% of Crohn's disease patients and about 20% in ulcerative colitis. But the normal, healthy, non-Crohn's disease patients did not have this uh, DNA marker in their blood. So there could be a link between MAP and the Crohn's disease. This was a study done on Crohn's disease patients who were sent into remission of their symptoms and were gradually reintroduced to certain foods. And the total number in the study was 42. And five out of 42 on the first time found that milk brought their symptoms back to them. And then they would go back into remission and they reintroduced it a second time. And it showed that four out of 42 just said milk caused their symptoms to come back. So this shows that there's something in the milk that is causing this. It's not lactose intolerance because they tested them for that and they were negative, but there could be something else in the milk to cause this. Um, there's many arguments against the fact that MAP can cause Crohn's disease. Um, the first one is that um, Crohn's would be more prevalent if MAP caused it. Um, only about less than 1% of people in the United States suffer from Crohn's disease right now. And um, so if MAP could cause it, then there would be much more people suffering. Because um, you can be exposed to MAP just by being exposed to ruminant animals because of the passage of it through their fecal matter. Um, there are also other sources that you can get MAP from, including water and meat. And since a lot more people drink water more often than milk or eat meat just as often as they would eat a dairy product, then there would be more chances for them to get MAP. Um, there's also the idea that MAP maybe just flourishes in the environment of Crohn's people. And so um, it may just be there all the time because of these different sources of it, but you see it more prevalently because uh, it's better suited to live in that environment, and so there may be more MAP growing in that area since they have the inflammation that it likes. Um, there are a lot of inconsistent lab results when it comes to looking at whether MAP causes Crohn's. This is a study done where they inoculated a bunch of different species of animals different ways, and none of the animals that they inoculated were tested positive for Crohn's or Yoni's disease, so um, this just showed that they couldn't bring the Crohn's disease to animals by um, inoculating them with MAP, and most of these animals are monogastrics, so they're similar to humans in that way. Um, there's also these inconsistent lab results where it shows that um, not all Crohn's patients or other inflammatory bowel disease patients um, tested positive for P uh, MAP using either PCR or culture. And it also showed that people that didn't have either one of these diseases tested positive for MAP in some cases. So that just kind of re reinstates the fact that maybe it's just there all the time and it flourishes in an environment where um, there's inflammation and damage to the intestine. Um, Koch's postulates is rules that a pathogen has to fulfill before it's considered a cause of a disease. And MAP does not fulfill these um, postulates for Crohn's disease. Um, the first rule is that it has to be present in all cases of Crohn's, which it is not. And um, the second one would be that it would have to be isolated and cultured from a host, but if you can't find it in all the hosts, then obviously it can't be isolated and cultured from them. Um, as I showed with the chart earlier, MAP cannot produce the disease when inoculated into an experimental host all the time. And so that's the third postulate. And the fourth one is that um, if it can't be found in that host, then it cannot be 
then obviously it can't fulfill the fourth one because it has to be found in the experimental host as well. Um, in conclusion, MAP is always found in Yoni's disease but is not always found in Crohn's disease, so it's still debatable whether it could cause Crohn's. And the overall occurrence of MAP in dairy products is 2% or less because of the pasteurization effect. So it's not really going to have a big impact on whether or not you drink milk. Um, even if MAP did cause Crohn's disease, there are other sources besides milk, so the dairy industry wouldn't be the only place that people could get MAP from. I mean, it could be in water and meat, so it could be from any other source. So it wouldn't just be the dairy industry's problem either. And the research reports that we've found, nothing has given us a definitive answer on yes, MAP will cause Crohn's disease directly from drinking milk or not. This is something that needs to be further researched to decide this and decide if there's a link between the Yoni's cows and Crohn's disease.